Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about LC leather filter design. This is our example number two. In this example we will again look at the Butterwort response and using this low pass filter configuration. This will be our second example and we will discuss a third order system. Of course we will work out everything in the calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our objective or design as set is a Butterworth response and it must be a passive and an LC ladder low pass filter configuration and we will use double terminated shunt input circuit of 50 ohm each so you can see actually the generalized filter here this is the input this is the output and by 50 ohm double terminate actually means that this must be 50 ohms and this is also 50 ohms this is actually a normalized standard filter circuit so that you can scale it up to a required let's say a value you want if this is for example 60 ohms everything is 60 60 so that's just scaling up we will see that shortly the specifications here are the maximum pass band ripple a max which is 1 db we will see also shortly what that means the minimum stop band attenuation is 10 db given by a min the passband frequency is 1 kHz, so at this frequency you need a 1 dB ripple of the, or the lowering. The stop band frequency is 2 kHz given by Fs, that is actually the, uh, the frequency where this minimum attenuation happens. So it at least of course, because you can also have 11 or 14 dB, but that depends of course on your order. All right, this is, these are the specifications. Let's now jump to the solutions. First, we'll start with the order. So we calculate the filter order N. So for that, we need the epsilon P and also the epsilon S, so two parameters, and also use that in the formula of the Butterworth response. So the epsilon P, that is a scalar value, is related to that A max using this formula. And if you now just substitute what we have, 1 dB, you get 0 0.5088 approximately. Epsilon S in a similar form, a minimum is 10, so you get 3 here exactly. Now, we now move on and take this together and then put it in this formula. You see here the log of the epsilon ratio, so epsilon S over epsilon P, and over the log of the FS over FP, so the stop band frequency and the pass band frequency. Now, we have everything. Just calculate is substitute the values and also the what we just calculated for epsilons you get here 2.5597 so that means we need at least three in order to create an integer circuit so we take and it's three so that will be a third order okay now we now calculate the frequency scaling factor kf of this circuit and it's also called the cutoff frequency for this case low pass filter Kf is given for the low pass filter for the Butterworth response by this formula. Kf is omega p times the epsilon we just calculated to the power of minus 1 over n. So minus 1 over n means we have an order. We just calculated that at 3, not this 2.5597. The omega p, we need to relate that to the fp, which is of course 1000 times 2 pi, and then we have our kf. So let's See that it's 2000 pi, that means 2 pi times 1000. You see the uh, epsilon p, also the n here, which is 3. Now, when you do the calculations here, you get 7870 radians per second. This is also the cutoff frequency, so that is then 1273 hertz. Okay, step three. We need to calculate now the scaled component values, and we also see that so that in the first example, this part here in the middle with the c1 l2 and the c3 that is our generalized circuit which is also our low pass filter the rs here and the rl are the two components here which is then the double terminated shunting configuration and this is the standard circuit for this uh, low pass filter we need to scale it up to the required specifications in this example and that scaled up version is with the prime. So the RS prime, C1 prime, etc. So the L2 prime, and you see all those primes here. We saw, remember, in the first example, it was a second order filter. Then the C1 and the L2 was there. Now we have also a C2. So for each order, you get a component. 
And for example, if you have a fourth order, you will get an inductor here. And a fifth order, you get another capacitor in parallel, etc. That is the ladder configuration. Okay, looking at the table, this is the buffer response table up to 10th order. You see, actually, we'll need a third order. So this is this row. It's given now here in this form. You see, again, it's X1, X2, and X3. We discussed this. This X1, X2, and X3 are the components. So it's C1 is the X1, C2, uh, X2, I mean, is the L2, etc. So you just actually follow the numbers here and you also follow the components here. We will see that now here how to do that going directly to the scaled component values because the C1 prime is C1, which is this over Km over Kf. What is C1? It's just one. You just take it from the uh, table. 50 for Km, that is the magnitude scaling factor. We have the frequency scaling factor, but we also have the magnitude scaling factor, which is 50. Why? Because it must be 50 ohms double terminated. So that is fixed. And we also have this 7,870 radians per second from the KF. Now, when you do the calculations, you get this 2.541 microfarads. In the L2 prime is the KM over KF times L2. This is just the scaling formulas for the inductors and the capacitors. Again, 50 for the KM and also for KF is the value already calculated. But now this is now 2. You see that here in the row here. And now we need to calculate, you get 12.71 mini Henry. In a similar form for C2, I mean C3 prime, C3 prime is C3 of the normalized value divided by Km times Kf, which is the exact same as C1 prime, because this is just, just one here and everything is the same. Now, we only have now the RS prime and RL prime. That's just the Km times RS because the resistors only change in scaling using magnitude scaling, not with the frequency scaling because if the frequency is changing, ideally, of course, the resistor is not changing. So we get 50 Km times 1, which is the normalized value. You get this 50 ohm. RL prime is the same thing. You get 50 ohms. So we have now everything for this circuit. These are the scaled values. These, these these values. Okay, moving on and looking at the design circuit, you see here the prototype low pass filter with the normalized values. You see there's one ohm, one farad, two Henry's, one farad, you remember, was one to one in the table, and also one ohm from this generalized circuit. This is again called the unscaled LC ladder, uh, ladder low pass filter, which is a prototype filter. Now we go to the scaled value, which is 50 ohms RS, 50 ohms RL, and you see also the values for the C1, L2, and C3. These are now the values. Now we will use this circuit and check that these specifications are met using the simulations. So you're going to do the simulation results. Moving on, this is the body plot for the gain. You see here the pass band gain, which is a flat line here, which has a value of minus 6.02 dBs. Why? Let's bring up the circuit. I already first said that because it is the the attenuation there is 0 0.5 because you get a 0. Point, I mean you get a 50 ohms in the at the input RS, RS and RL is also 50 ohms. So you get actually a division of 50 over 100. That's actually 0 0.5 and in dBs it's minus 6.02 dBs. That's at low low frequencies. Now when you go to the pass band frequency. It's one kilohertz. Why? Because if I go down from z minus 0 0.62 to minus 7.02 dB, which is one dB down, which is the pass band ripple, I reach it at one kilohertz, which is exactly what we want. So these two specifications, the first and the third one, are met. You can also look at the stop band attenuation, which in this case, 12.45. How do we calculate that? Now you look at 2 kilohertz. That value is minus 18.47 dB, but you started at minus 6.02 dB. So you go down actually by this much, 12.45, and we need it at least 10 dB. So also we have at least what we wanted. You might say, why at exactly 10 dB? Remember what we have calculated for our filter was not exactly 3, but something like 2.45 etc. So it was a little bit lo smaller. So we rounded uh, actually the number 
to a higher value, which is three. So you get more attenuation than what you actually should get. Okay. Now the cutoff frequency is 1.2523 kilohertz here. And we have, the, we had the scaling factor, frequency scaling factor was 1. Point, I mean 1,253 hertz. So very close to what we have calculated and probably also due, due to rounding off errors, this small difference. So everything is actually correct here. And this is again the circuit. You see the circuit here, the shunting here, and also the load. That's why we have this attenuation of 0 0.5. All right, guys, this is our example number two about this LC Lander low pass filter using this Butterworth response characteristics. And we use double terminated shunting of 50 ohms. And we discussed the specifications in this simulation also. Before that, we calculated everything step by step. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.